So you're looking at getting a Browning semi-auto shotgun. Which one do you get? There's a few different options. These three guns may look very similar, but they're all very different at very different price points. So today I'm gonna answer the question, if I could only have one Browning semi-auto shotgun, which one would I go with? Maxxis 2, the A5, or the Browning Silver? That's today's video, let's go. So I've already reviewed each and every one of these shotguns in detail. The link to those videos is down below. Today's something a little bit different. It's an ultimate shotgun showdown. Usually when I do a shotgun showdown, it's just two guns head to head. But here we got three guns within the same brand and I'm challenging myself with the question, if I could only have one Browning semi-auto, which one would it be? That's a challenge. They're all different. I like different things. There's a method to the madness. In fact, it's called the Sosa test. Proprietary, copywritten, trademarked, can't take it. It's the Sosa test, which of course stands for Steve's official shotgun assessment to effectively save time. That is save you time because thinking of that acronym took a lot of my time. I actually didn't take that much. I didn't even think of it. Jordan the camera guy did. So if you hate it, let him know. If you love it, Jordan says he'll make a t-shirt and make that available for sale. The Sosa test is five standard categories where I rank each gun on a scale of one to 10. So you have 50 points possible, but wait, every gun has a handicap based on price. Any gun less than $500 has no handicap, then 500 to 750 has one handicap, 750 to 1000 has a negative two, so on and so forth. For example, you have the Browning Maxxis 2, Wicked Wing Edition, beautiful, awesome looking gun. It's above two grand though. Yes, above two grand, negative seven for the handicap. This shotgun, the A5, is just under two grand, 1999 MSRP, so it only has a negative six handicap. And then we step down in price to the Browning Silver, which has an MSRP of just under $1,400, so it only has a handicap of negative four. The higher the dollars, the bigger the handicap, so your scores are gonna have to be greater to overcome that handicap. Let's dive right in. First category that we get to assess. Looks. This is all about the beauty. I'm just taking a look at these three shotguns. Which one catches my eye? These Wicked Wing editions are sharp. Something that catches my eye in this Wicked Wing that makes me go, I want one of those. So, Silver, sorry, you're out. A5, I know it's not your grandpa or your grandma's A5. It's a completely different gun, but a similar look. There's something nostalgic about it. I kind of just looks wise, want to gravitate towards the A5. On a scale of one to 10, looks, I'm gonna give the A5, I think it's a niner. The Maxxis is also a nine. I, they're, they're right there, they're both nines. And then I'm gonna drop it down to a seven and a half. Seven and a half, I couldn't go all the way down to seven. It's a fine looking shotgun. It's just, you put it next to these two buttes and it, you know, comparison trap. It doesn't look quite as pretty, seven and a half. Moving right along into the next category, we're gonna need some hearing protection for this one because we're going shooting. It's recoil and reliability. You know, I kind of like these showdowns, skipping some of the specs. We could dive into the specs, but this video would get terribly long. Who's got time for that? Let's get to shooting. We're gonna start off with the lowest dollar, silver. Now in the review, I really didn't have any issues with the silver, cycled very well. Let's try a few off the trap, pull, oh yeah. Feels good, mounts naturally. I like that a lot. Recoil's light, straight back to the shoulder. Of course, this gun is seven pounds, nine ounces, a little on the heavier side, so that should definitely help with felt recoil. If I recall right, this gun, oh, I thought this gun shot fine from the hip. Hmm. Yeah, having a little bit of feeding issues. This is a gas-operated gun. A5 is inertia and the Maxxis 2 is gas. Recoil wise, I'm pretty happy with this silver. Kind of straight back to the shoulder. I am a little curious on why I'm having so many issues over the head. It is not cycling well over the head. These are light target rounds, or not super light, ounce and an eight. Let's try ounce and a quarter. 1,450 feet per second. This is the Federal Speed Shock. 
Oh, felt that a lot more. At least it was straight back into my shoulder still. No issues there. The cool thing about a showdown is I get to do these things head to head. I get to see these guns back to back. It's fresh in my mind. When I review them all separately, I don't quite get that. Hard to compare. It feels pretty good, straight back. I like the trigger on this gun. Woo, look at her run. No issues there. We're going to the waterfowl rounds. These babies are cooking. A bit more recoil. Crushing those clays though. Still really impressed. Recoil was back into my shoulder. Reliability, it's kind of a toss up. Neither are blowing my mind right now. They are freshly oiled, should be shooting well. Let's go to the Maxis 2. Now this gun has been used and abused. This was in a test where I threw it in the snow, iced it up, I beat on this gun. That is slick. That is smooth on the recoil. It's gonna be hard to beat, honestly. Stretching my memory, but I believe in the review, this gun shot over the head and I believe the silvered it as well. Ever since I beat this gun up in that uh, freezing shotgun test, it has not operated the same, honestly. Like I'm getting a double feed there. Even a little issue there. These two, the Maxxis 2 and the A5, were definitely a little bit more enjoyable to shoot from the recoil standpoint. As far as reliability, I can't say I have one that really stands out. I'm gonna give this a nine. I'm sitting here contemplating it because it's one of the lightest recoiling semi-autos that I know of. Very comfortable shooting gun. I maybe bring it down to an eight and a half. I wish I saw a little bit more reliability out of it. I'm not gonna beat it up based on what I've seen here, but based on my prior shooting. So we're going to eight and a half here. This has slightly more recoil, but it took me to shoot the waterfowl loads to really even notice that. I wish this was a little bit more reliable. I'm bringing it down to an eight. I wanna love this, but I gotta bring it to an eight. The silver, recoil's not bad. It's pretty manageable. I, I think we're right there at an eight as well. Moving on from recoil and reliability to ergonomics. This is the look, the feel, the function of the shotgun. So first thing I do is I like to pick it up. This feels a little bit like a two by four. It is kind of chunky to be honest with you. It doesn't feel bad, it's just big. Mount this up right there, stepped up rib. In fact, I really like that. I like the receiver, the controls are very basic controls. You got a normal bolt release. The safety is kind of cool. It's this triangular safety. Nice finish to the gun. Recoil pad is nothing fancy. Very basic recoil pad. Overall, this is pretty nice gun. And then you pick up something like the A5 and you're like, oh, now that's, that's nice. Um, feels a little bit better. It's a little bit more slender. There's not a lot of texture to it balance wise. Feels pretty good in the hands. Feels like it's maybe a little light on the barrel side, but it's balanced pretty well, honestly. Uh, mount this up. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Well finished. I love the oversized controls, bolt release, charging handles, just kind of basic. Safety's on the back side. This is an inflex recoil pad. Stock, pretty basic though, otherwise. It does have a mid bead. Really like that on the A5. I love the humpback. It's just a nostalgic look to it. Absolutely. Moving into the Maxxis. This is just a different beast here. I don't maybe like the look quite as much at first glance because it looks just more, it has more smooth lines that just don't catch my eye the same way. But rubber over molding, if this holds up long term, I love it. Feels great in the hands. The ergonomics are nice. Oversized trigger guard, release handle, oversized. It's got the soft comb cheek pad. Nice inflex recoil pad, mid bead. It has the stepped up rib. Where this is pretty flat on the receiver, which is okay because of the humpback. I'm, I think I'm able to shoot that pretty well. We'll get to that in a little bit. But holding this in the hands, yeah, I'm right there. Mount up, right there. A lot to like about this gun. Nickel Teflon coated bolt as does this one. Ergonomics, the feel the function. I'm giving a slight edge to the Maxxis on this. Again, really want to like the A5 a little bit more. I don't know why, but I want to. But the Maxxis has the edge. I think as far as ergonomics go, it, it's a nine. It's a nine, this is an eight and a half, and this is a seven. Nine, eight and a half, seven. We're moving right along. It's a close race. We're gonna break down these guns, 
see what the difference is, how quickly I can break them down on the clock. Four end cap off, don't love that four end cap. Barrel, four end off, which you're gonna see hidden in this forearm is this sleeve, pusher sleeve, and the piston, nice and dirty. These gas guns, one thing I wish Browning would do is a one pin trigger group. Some of the other guns out there, you only need to take one pin, trigger groups out, bolts out. That's the breakdown of the Browning Silver. Not a huge fan of that cap. You're gonna see there is nothing inside of that, plain and simple. Look at that nickel Teflon bolt. Still gotta pop the two pins, unfortunately. A little simpler, there you go. A5 is broken down. Now going to the Maxxis 2. Four end cap, a little bit nicer. I like that. So you got all these extra pieces on these gas guns that you don't have on the A5. Close the bolt, that comes out easy. There we go, pop the pins. Uh-oh, that one made it to the grass. So a lot of similarities between the Silver and the Maxxis 2, as far as their components, I mean you have a gas piston, you have a sleeve and you have a spring that all goes on the magazine tube, that is similar. The bolt is a two-piece bolt design on the Maxxis 2. When it comes to the A5, just a little bit simpler design. You don't have those three components here, it's an inertia design, a little bit different bolt, one-piece bolt. If Browning made this a one pin, I think they would up their game. As far as breakdown, ease of use and cleaning, I mean, you can't beat the inertia guns. This is gonna be not quite as good as some of the Benelli scores. Because it's a two pin design, it takes a little bit longer. You know, for example, the Super Black Eagle 3, I gave a 10 because of the way that breaks down. You'll have to check out that video. I think we can give this a nine. And I think we're at eights on both the Silver and the Maxxis 2. Uh, a little bit of an edge here. I mean, these three extra pieces are a little bit more complicated to take out uh, and a little bit more complicated to clean. All right, let's put these guns back together. And the guns are back together. Now it's time to do some more shooting. This last category is called vibes or shooting vibes. This is just the overall shooting experience that you get with these guns. I'm gonna shoot off the machine. I might be getting to do a little speed shooting. Speaking of which, I speed shot all of these shotguns. I reviewed these two last year, the Maxxis 2 and the A5 and the Silver early this year. As far as times, I shot the Silver in a 1 2 1. Now, I'm better this year than I was last year. I still only shot a 1 2 1. Last year, I shot a 1 2 4 and 1.29. So, actually, I shot the A5 the fastest. That's surprising. I'm gonna put them to the test. I'm gonna see which one I can shoot the fastest, which one feels the most comfortable, mounts the best, gives me the overall best shooting vibes. Pull. Feels good. Feels like a Slinging a two by four around though. I really like that. It's a light in the hands. Max is two. Points nice. Now let's try some speed shooting. On the clock, three clays. How fast can I hit them? And I'm gonna cycle through. Every attempt, I'm gonna pick up a different gun just to see where I end up. Which one do I naturally shoot faster? Up first is the Browning Silver. Here we go. A one, three, three. That does not beat my time. I had a one, two, one before. Not getting faster, okay. Let's try the A5. Oh, that felt better. I was a little slower on the trigger. A one, three, four. So slightly slower than the silver. To the Maxxis two. Okay, I did miss one there. That felt good though. A one, one, seven. I'm shooting the Maxxis two the fastest, didn't necessarily hit the clay. I'm gonna give them all one more shot, see if I can beat my scores. Last time on the silver, I shot a one, three, three. See if I can beat that one, three, three. One, two, three. I nicked the one clay. Got faster though, a one, two, three. To the A5, I shot a one, three, four. I know this gun's capable of far more than that. A one, one, two. I missed the last clay, but that was a 112. I'm not gonna sit out here all day to get this perfect like I normally do in a review. A 112. I shot a 117 in this last time, but my fastest score 
At least shooting at three clays is a one, one, two. Let's see if I can beat it with the Maxis two. That was smoking. Unfortunately, I did not shoot as fast as I did with the A5. That was a one, one, nine. Uh, so I ended up beating what I did in the review last year. To me, it comes down to these two guns, the Maxis two on speed shooting and shooting vibes, which are gonna have the highest score. That doesn't mean they're gonna win the overall competition here, this ultimate showdown. But what I'm gonna do is just a rapid fire speed test from the shoulder when the buzzer goes off as fast as I can. A 0.58, just over half a second, three shots. It took me 0.23, then I had a 1.916 split. Those aren't crazy fast splits, honestly. Uh, sometimes I find I shoot faster at clays than I do when I'm shooting at the air. Let's try this. Pretty fast, especially for inertia gun, 0.53. That's crazy. Splits still weren't crazy fast. A 1.6 is pretty decent. 1.8 is a little slow for me. But honestly, when it comes to speed shooting and shooting vibes, I'm just having trouble here, folks. If a clay goes out and I just mount this up, shooting experience. I know a lot of y'all do hand-thrown clays. Clay goes out, mount up. This feels like it's a little bit more natural for me, but honestly, I feel like I'm shooting the A5 better. So when it comes to shooting vibes, I think I'm gonna have to go nine on the A5, eight and a half with the Maxis two and a seven with the silver. Shoot the silver just fine. Uh, it's, it's just a, a clunker gun. It's not as enjoyable to shoot. It doesn't give me the same vibes. Okay, man. Now, as far as bonus points, this is the part that I get to award just random points for things that I like. Things that stand out to me, bonus point wise, is basically the rubber over molding and the soft comb of this shotgun. I will give it one bonus point. Other than that, these guns are pretty similar as far as look. Other standout items? I don't know, I'm, that's it. That's it for bonus points. I'm shutting it down. Let's tally up the points. 33 and a half for the Browning Silver. Let's go to the A5. We got some high scores here. We come up with 43.5, but it has a negative six handicap. We are bringing it down to a 37.5. Takes the silver by a long shot. Now, where does the maxes come in? This should be good. Down to 37. Look at that. Even with the bonus point, it comes up one short of the A5. The Sosa test has proven to be accurate again. I mean, I can't lie with those numbers. I think the A5 has an ever so slight edge over the Maxis 2. I enjoy shooting both. There's just something that really attracts me about this gun. The Silver is a okay gun, but for 1400 bucks, I'm probably gonna pass. If I could only have one Browning semi-auto shotgun, here we have it. I'm going with the Browning A5 Wicked Wing Edition. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Put it down in the comments. Be gentle. I got feelings. I'm a human. And what other ultimate showdowns would you like to see? Would love to hear it. Remember guys, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those targets that you're laser focused on. To live, target focus. See ya.